professor of volcanology at the University of Clermont-Auvergne, which is part of the Observatoire de Physique du Globe de Clermont-Ferrand uh, in France, in the central part of France. He speaks and teaches in rough English, French, and Spanish, so you can talk to him in all these three languages. Uh, he coordinated International Masters Central Risk and in Vogue. He has set up courses such as teaching in English. His research is transdisciplinary, involving uh, volcanology, tectonics, geoheritage, risk, and communication. He has a broad publication portfolio with diverse subject themes and is running a UNESCO geoscience program project which is called Geoheritage for Resilience. Um, for him, there should be no separation between the community, pure research and practical application when dealing with the environmental issues and hazards. The scientists must, must work within society and geoheritage is a powerful way to do this. Thank you very much, Ben, for coming and um, go ahead. Okay. Buenas tardes. Good afternoon. Para ayudarle, para ayudarles, tengo lo que voy a decir en inglés. For those who need it, um, I have the talk written in Spanish as well as English. So, so there you are. Right, the first thing is I'd like to apologize for using the word geologist. We're not all geologists here. I'd rather think of ourselves as people, okay? And I think most geologists are people at least, so uh, there we are. And here's an example up here of people working on a geological object. We have on the right side, there's a psychologist. Uh, next to her, there is, just have to remind myself, an anthropologist. Then there's an artisan, quarry worker, and finally a geologist. And they're holding a plaque of a tallado, uh, an engraving of the UNESCO project that Marie Noel uh, is also part of. She's the secretary of the project. So uh, that's where we are, working on a geological object but with everybody included. The cantero there lives in the quarry. Okay, next. It works. Okay, so um, when I was working out this, I was thinking about, I was watching a Mexican cinema and other cinema, I was thinking of, really, it's a bit like a spaghetti western, what we're doing. We have the good, the bad, and the ugly. So, uh, for those who know Mexican cinema, there are two examples of films by the same director, the same main actor. And one of them, El Infierno, the hell, we can think of the guy in that as the good guy. He's someone who comes into a community, he learns about the community, he behaves like the community does, he massacres many people, he murders, uh, he sells drugs and whatever, but he's still part of the community. And in the other film, it's quite different. The guy comes into the community, he puts in his own laws, the Ley de Herodes, um, which we'll explain later, and he, he ignores the community completely. In the first film, the guy dies at the end. In this film, he comes out on top. Okay, in Spaghetti Westerns, there's the good, the bad, and the ugly. Next. I think of the ugly guy a bit like the man from Del Monte, which I hope you, you know about. Beautifully dressed gringo who flies in to some poor banana republic, takes the juiciest fruits. It's him who decides everything, and everybody else is quaking about him. So he is the ugly. So keep those three types of people in mind. Think about which one you might be. Not necessarily a man, but maybe from Del Monte. And 
let's get to the real subject of the talk next. Okay, so. Sorry. Okay, that's better. In all aspects. Oh, gracias, señor. El café. Ah, sí, no voy a dormir. So, um, in all aspects of a geologist's work or a person's work, shall we say, we go into some place and we interact with that place and we leave something behind, some effect of ourselves. So here's more than 30 years ago me on the island of Ometepe in Nicaragua. Entonces, en todos los aspectos de nuestro trabajo, uh, actuamos en una manera que tiene una influencia en el lugar, el sitio donde trabajamos. Next, siguiente. Entonces, utilizando geopatrimonio, geoheritage, un poco en el estilo de los geoparques de, UNES, de la UNESCO, que es más de abajo, por arriba. Eso es el sentido del, del geopatrimonio que es muy inclusivo. Y Uh, uh, es una manera de integrar con el paisaje, con la cultura y la sociedad en el cual trabajamos y actuar en una forma más armoniosa. So, geoheritage is a way, thinking about global geoparks, it's the way that they work from bottom up. And this is the idea that we've been developing, working through this way so we can get more, shall we say, equitable outcomes through our work. Next. Um, well, I forgot to introduce the images. We'll come back to them. Uh, so this UNESCO program is part of the UNESCO International Geosciences program. It's a project 692, Geoheritage for Resilience. Resilience is the capacity of all of us to be resilient against any changes that might happen for us. We sold it as for natural hazards, but it can be for anything. And here's an example from La Isla de Ometepe in Nicaragua. We have Danitza Churata from the geopark of the Volcanes de Andagua, um, talking with local people of all different types, preparing the way for various different types of work, geologists work and others, that we're going to do. Siguiente, por favor. So, in, the, in this island of Ometepe and this way of working, uh, I'd like to remember Marta Navarro, who unfortunately died here in Mexico in December. And for many, many years, she worked with communities, especially in Nicaragua, her home country. You can see her there with the stratigraphy on the island of Ometepe, but also only in June last year, working within a taller or workshop of the local community. Next, please. So, what do we do in this sort of thing? What's important? Well, the first thing when you get into, you decide to do something, is think what is important. Think of the place that you're working on. Think of the people that you're working with or might be impacted by your work. And think about what you could do that could be helpful, could be useful. It's quite a different way of working than we normally work as scientists, although I think quite a lot of you are probably converted to this already. So here's an example. These are the Canteras de Añas Huayco, the Añas Huayco quarries near Arequipa in Peru. And a few years ago, we started with our Peruvian colleagues a project there uh, the quarry people had started a tourist route and they came to complain to the geologist for some administrative problems but we all started talking together and here's an example of where we're all sitting down and drawing our image of the area where we're working and this aids us to come to a general group idea of what we're working from. We can learn from their experience of working from the rock and they can learn from us. There were architects, lawyers, tourist guides as well working on that. And the result of that is work, as you see there, we didn't publish a paper, well we did actually, but we also published a rock. So there is 
the history of the Ignimbrite there engraved on the rock. So now, in the tourist route, the tourists come through. They see the rock, they see the history of the volcano, they learn about the hazards and the risks they might uh, have. They also can see an animated video, they can read about it in a comic book, Dibujo uh, Animado. It's, it's a whole experience. Next, please. So then you have to think about the outcomes. The two in the photo in the middle are sitting up there. Um, this is a local people, which is actually the campus of UNAM in Mexico City. So the, the locals are the professors and the students and whoever works there. And the biologists, the soil scientists got together with the geologists um, and together they worked to create a site which is called the Geopedregal, which is more than just a lava flow, it's also the, the biota, the ecosystem on there and it's also somewhere where you can appreciate cultural things and you can get out of your lab and have a bit of real world. And that's spread and spreading around the campus to other areas. So the other picture, you see us all working together, a whole group of people, professors, gardeners, whatever, all together cleaning up an area. Next. The other thing is to work outside the box, try different things, work in different ways. So here is Luisa Macedo uh, from Peru, from the Instituto Geofisico although she's just left there. And her idea was to create an account of the er great eruption in Peru from the year 1600, the Huayna Putina, uh, in the form of a children's book that could be distributed to the whole region which was impacted and likely to be impacted by the volcano. And so starting from a simple story with an artist, we created the pictures, and then the story moved through different stages until it was finally published. And the local school in Omate, the professors from the local school, took the, the account and they enacted it out as a play for the local children. So you see a whole community involved in the scientific work. And now that's a publication. So using this work, you can also generate uh, publications and you can embed your other, so we say, more technical scientific publications in them as well. Next. Okay, it sounds very good, but this is where La Ley de Herodes, uh, which loosely translated is you always get screwed one way or the other. Okay, so it's a great idea, it's a very efficient way, it's a very equitable way of working. I can count on my fingers and my toes how many research proposals have been turned down recently involving this. The people who have the purse strings, the people who run scientific programs and funds don't tend to like this sort of thing. Or maybe it's for ignorance, or maybe it's from our ignorance, but it's very hard to get this sort of thing funded and accepted. It doesn't seem efficient from outside, but it is. Um, it can be bad habits. We, we all want to go somewhere and do something very quickly. and We might not want to think about all the impacts. We might not just not care. Um, so what we can do, can we get out of the idea of parachute science where we just fly in and fly out like the man from Del Monte and just take all the juicy bits? For this, I thought of fair trade. Wouldn't it be good to have fair science, an organization like that? You know fair trade? Okay, so fair science. And as usual, when I have a good idea, this always happens, it's la ley de errores, someone else has had the idea before and started it. So, siguiente. There is a way. It's called the Fair Research Fairness Initiative. It was started only two or three years ago by health scientists, people who work on diseases and health, especially in Africa, with the idea of being far more inclusive with the people they worked with 
and find if they could find better ways of working. And it's a great initiative. And there's a website there. And uh, so I, I'm going to run very simply through what, the, what is a very complete account on their website of how to engage in this sort of process. Entonces, esa iniciativa para la equidad en la investigación ya existe. El sitio web es por aquí. Y básicamente, bueno, hay que empezar a incluir a todos los, los actores con quien se va a trabajar. Los científicos de los países en desarrollo o del sitio, depende de dónde se, se hace el trabajo. Y hasta implicarles en las decisiones de financiamiento también. So, you start by including all actors, especially those in the developing countries who you're going to work with, and if you can, integrate them into the funding system so they get a say in who gets the money in the work in their area. Next, please. Siguiente. So, the other thing is getting back to the good, the bad, and the ugly. Try to be good. Right? So try and cause no harm in the area you're work, working, which requires a certain understanding of the society and the culture of where you're working. Spend some time. Try not to be bad. Think about those negative impacts that sometimes are very hard to identify before. And here's an example. This is back in Peru. This is last year. Very isolated area in the south of Peru near the Bolivia-Chile frontier. There's a volcano there. And so we're turning up. I'm a gringo with the Peruvians. Um, we're talking to the local people, introducing ourselves and saying, there's a volcano here. We'd like to come and work. We'd like to know your opinion about that. And what do you think? What's your idea? Well, the first thing they told us, right, it's not that volcano, it's the other one. We had the wrong name. So they, they put us right straight away, but this guy on the far left for you, Marcos, he introduced us to so many things, he knew the landscape very well, it was extremely useful. But the idea is that he also lives in a very precarious environment, and you need to understand that when you're starting to work there. Especially if you're going to do something like geoheritage. This area is magnificent. It's the sort of place you could take people and they'd go there instead of going to Machu Picchu because it's so beautiful. No one goes there at the moment because there's no road until last year. So people are going to arrive and there are going to be impacts. But what will those impacts be? Next. So... Be open and inclusive and return to basics. So here's a photo from back in La Isla de Ometepe in Nicaragua. And the guy in the big blue shirt with the bald head, he's the director of the El Ceibo Museum. It's a brilliant archaeological museum, which also has an incredible collection of banknotes. And on their instigation, we began to provide them with rocks because they want also to include the history of their area to have a complete museum experience. So again, we're responding to a request from local people. But going out and looking for the rocks, we found a whole load of things we didn't expect to find, and that has been very useful for our research as well. So go back to basics with people. Okay, this sounds all pretty good, so let's continue. Okay, even better, some big institutions are now beginning to adopt the Research Fairness Initiative. For example, the French Institute for Research for Development. It's a big government research institute. There's people from there in Mexico, there's people all over the world. Um, they've adopted, they've embraced this way of working. All right, sounds great. But, la ley de errores, again, they've run out of money. No one wants to fund it. So, the activities of Research Fairness Initiative has ceased for the moment. It's on standby. 
The website is still working, so you can go and look at it, and it is full of very interesting things. So it's, it's not dead yet. And what are we going to do? Well, we're going to continue. Vamos a continuar. Entonces, por los últimos dos diapositivas, vamos a ver lo que podemos hacer personalmente, cada uno, cada individuo, y institucionalmente, para ver si podemos mejorar esta situación. Next. Okay, thank you. So, personally, personalmente, en la forma que actuamos en nuestro trabajo del campo, por ejemplo, escucha el paisaje, integrarse a su experiencia de su trabajo, escucha al pueblo, pensar a lo, lo, lo que viven en ese entorno. So, listen to the landscape, really try and drink in the landscape, integrate with the people in that landscape as well, so you have a better impression of where you're working. Remember that science is really just a method of doing things and there are other ways of working that you can integrate that will enrich your work. Entonces, no olvida que la ciencia es un método más que todo y podemos integrar otros elementos en nuestro trabajo que van a enriquecer lo que hacemos. Think about the aims, cuáles son los objetivos de nuestros trabajos. What do we want to achieve finally? Do we want to reduce the risks for people? Do we want to help increase their economic stability? And how does our science actually do that? Not all, all of our science can impact that directly, but most of our science can insert into that in one way or another. And here's an example from the island of Vulcano. This is two years ago, and a group of actors came in and dancers and worked with the local school children and the scientists. And this is one of the products. It's a film that you can see on YouTube, Tefra, which is the children's interpretation of their island and their life in respect to the... Tefra that surrounds them and the volcano which is ever so close to where they live. This was done just months before the volcano began to reactivate and these elements enabled the scientists as well to have much more contact with the local people and to for both groups to understand each other better. Okay, the situation is not perfect but it's better than it was. Lastly, what can we do institutionally? Siguiente. Es la última. Okay. Open up discussion. Como estamos haciendo ahora. Discutimos abiertamente de esos temas. Abrir el debate. Aumentar la sensibilización. Hablar y intercambiar sobre los elementos, los problemas, las buenas prácticas, por ejemplo, que podemos tener. So, increase awareness of the, the issues that you may have where you come into somewhere and work in a place. And also for the people who live and work in this place, for example, observatories or people in Morelia and people from Mexico come to work here or gringos like me. Uh, what do you expect from us, really? That would be useful to know. So... Good examples. I've shown you a few good examples. They're not the only ones. We've heard quite a lot throughout the last day or so, actually, of how things can be done well. So we need that to be more appreciated. And finally, challenge the system. Go to those funding organizations, those big institutions. See if you can change how they, they look at things. So... Cuestionar el sistema, no romper todo, no hacer una erupción volcánica y acabar con todo. Sabemos que las re revoluciones tienen también, uh, hablando como un francés y ustedes como mexicanos, las revoluciones tienen de vez en cuando efectos nefastos también. Entonces, no, don't, no quiebre el sistema, pero vamos a ver cómo funciona, cómo podemos mejorarlo. 
ASTA Research Fairness Initiative, one of the things of that, it's primarily being created by people that centered in Switzerland. So with the view from the developing countries of how to behave with the developed countries. But I think what would be very nice is to hear from the other way around. And we're thinking of having a workshop maybe in December, November in Nicaragua, and there's also cities in volcanoes in Guatemala, where we think we may have a chance of having a discussion about this, no a priori, but see what people think and see what we can create together that might improve the ways that we work. The experience is that ways of working like this can be more efficient in many ways for our personal scientific research, but also for the local communities, for the general scientific community. So uh, it's something that works. And like fair trade, it's something that we should try and promote. Entonces, para terminar, lo que sería muy interesante es tener la opinión de, por ejemplo, los, ustedes, de los países en desarrollo, etcétera, de este sistema. Y vamos a tener un workshop en Nicaragua y probablemente un otro con el COV en Guatemala en febrero del año próximo para discutir y y ver lo que se piensa de estas iniciativas. Gracias.